So I've been doing a lot of music production on the road with my uh, laptop that has USB-C. And when doing music production, I do tend to find that the battery runs out quite quickly. And so I was looking for something to give extra battery life to the laptop, keeping it portable uh, while also being powerful enough. I found this Anchor Power, I think the names are one are complex. PowerCore Plus 26,800 with USB-C PD. And then on the box also it says, and PowerPort Speed PD30, power line USB-C to USB-C 2.0. Opening it up, almost all of Anchor's packaging is, is cardboard, so it's easily, to be, easily recyclable. Uh, it comes in a nice cellophane, or I think this is CPE 07. CPE, I think it's custom polyethylene bag 07. That could be a little challenging to recycle in the United States. I think you can re recycle that with plastic bags maybe. It's got an interesting texture to it. But here's the battery. I have taken the battery out and charger just to make sure that it does work. Um, so uh, it is fully charged. It does uh, come partially charged to meet UN regulations for battery safety. So if you get your battery pack and you go, why has it only got three bars or only partially charged? There is a reason for that. Inside the box, you get the battery, you get uh, a welcome guide to the PowerPort Speed PD30, which is the power brick, which I'll show in a second, and the PowerCore Plus 26,800 power delivery welcome guide. I don't know how much there really is inside this guy. Well, there's some stuff in here. Okay, make sure you use and recharge the battery once every four months to preserve battery lifespan. Lithium-ion batteries do like to be exercised. That is, that is one good thing. So using them is nice. Okay, so you got the power, you got all the guides, and then you get a nice uh, storage case. Like a, I don't know what material this is, but it's kind of a, a little bit spongy, uh, but, but definitely see-through storage bag for this. And then there are the, just the, the charging uh, brick, which is pretty nice because also wrapped up in a bag. Uh, this is a 30 watt, yeah, power port speed PD30. It is a 30 watt power delivery over USB-C. So you can use this both to charge the battery and with laptops that, that would accept USB-C that uh, can charge off between 25 and 30 watts. So that'd be like your MacBooks, Dell XPS 13 perhaps, um, Chromebooks perhaps I think are USB-C. So this could also power those as well. So you kind of get a charger for the battery and a charger for your laptop as well. So you get that. And then two cables. A USB-C to USB-C cable for charging, and then for some reason a USB-A to micro USB. I don't know why they, I guess they just give this to, actually it doesn't even say on the box that, it's, that it comes with that, or that was, was included, but I'll take an extra cable. So you get quite a bit in the box. And what I wanted to do is just get a test of the power output to the various ports, and this is rated, uh, let me unplug this and flip this on its back. And it is rated a uh, power delivery input at five volts at up to three amps, nine volts up to three amps, 15 volts, oh, they didn't put the volt there, this is 15. I'm assuming that's 15 volts at two amps and 20 volts at one and a half amps. So that's, you know, that's the USB-C, I think part of the USB-C spec for power delivery. So it can charge at any one of those voltages. The standard output for each of these ports is uh, five volts, three amps. So that's pretty hefty. And then, because most power bricks are usually uh, five volts, two amps or five volts, 2.4 amps. And then the power delivery output on this is 5 volts, 3 amps, 9 volts, 3 amps, 
15 volts, 2 amps, or 20 volts at 1.25 amps. No, 20 volts would not be, no, 1.5 1, amp would be 30 watts. So at the, if you're at 20 volts, this is not going to give you 30 watts. So I'm assuming it's going to try to always do 15 volts at the, at the 2 amps to get 30 watts. This would be 20, uh, 25. Can I do math? So that's the ratings. Turning it on, going to power this up, and then we're going to slap on a uh, spaceship here, our, our, lo our load tester. And hopefully I don't have it already. No, it's turned on all the way. Okay, cool. So it's fully charged, 5.1 volts, 5.10 volts, a little bit of current draw to power the quiescent draw of the load tester. I just wanted to do a quick test of over current protection on this. And then I'll come back, we'll set up a power delivery test. I'm gonna run that at, set it up to run at 30 watts. First thing we'll do is just get this set up. Getting up to two amps and pretty good regulation. We're sitting here still at 5.05 volts. It's not sagging really at all, which is nice. It is a, uh, a feature that Anchor is pretty, they tout all over their boxes, the, the line regulation, the voltage boost line regulation. So we're getting up to 2.4, so that's typically where, you know, most USB bricks would be like, or USB power banks would cut out. Um, and we're going to take this up to 3 amps. I don't know if this, I don't know how high this thing will go up to. So we're at three amps now. Now it's starting to sag. You can see it drop below five volts. And I just believe it's cut out, or that, does that mean it adapter cut out? Okay, I'm gonna back it off because it's just gonna keep cutting out. So it's three amps. Uh, obviously it's back on again because it powered all this back up. So it cuts out right at three amps. And all the way up to three amps, pretty good regulation. I, it only dropped below five volts right as we started crossing over the three amp mark. Take a quick break, get this thing set up to do power delivery. Okay, that uh, took a little longer than I expected. Um, there appears to be an issue with the load tester that I have, which for some reason it's not detecting power delivery. And this just wouldn't turn on using the USB-C Port. It works great for USB-A, as you saw, we were doing the load testing there, but it would not function with the USB-C. It just wouldn't turn on. So what I instead have to get some sort of a test and, and get a baseline is the power bank plugged into the, the power analyzer, and it is not plugged into my MacBook Pro, which will, you know, it'll charge at 60 watts to maximum from the, from the power adapter. So we know that it'll pull about as much as this is going to give. And so the battery is mostly discharged. It's about 40% right now. And so we can see that it has selected 15 volts. Just run until the battery goes dead. I'll keep the MacBook Pro loaded up. It's sitting right at around 27.6 watts. Yeah, so we're driving the, the processor at around 25 watts, plus it's trying to charge the battery. So uh, you can see, yeah, it is, it is really uh, at its max. All right, we're back. We got the measurements from the USB multimeter. We know that the average output voltage during the test charging the MacBook Pro was 14.19 volts. Also, the USB multimeter reported that the measured output current to the load was 5,407 milliamp hours or 5.407 amp hours. And so to get basically what the power was delivered to the load is just the calculation of voltage times current equals power when we're working in DC. And so 14.19 volts DC times the 5.407 amp hour gives us 76.72 watt hours. I wanna make a quick check in for the compensation for the USB multimeter quiescent power draw as you'll see in a second, this is not important for this particular measurement, 
But in the next video, as we start to do power profiling for this new battery and the year old battery, the quiescent power draw for the multimeter becomes more important as the loading on the battery decreases. So just a quick check in here shows that at five volts, the meter consumed four milliamps. And so with a quick conversion using linear interpolation gets us to 0.014 amps at 14.19 volts DC. I couldn't measure this directly for some reason, the power delivery between the USB multimeter and the load, the synthetic load, just would not work. So this linear interpolation should work quite well because the power draw on this USB multimeter should stay fairly stable regardless of what voltage it's running at. The quiescent current contribution to the total current, quite a mouth, mouthful there, is 0.726%, which is within the margin of error. So we're not considering it for any calculations here. So to sum it all up, the overall conversion efficiency is simply 76.72 watt hours divided by 96.48 watt hours, which gives us an efficiency of 79.5%. Now you may say, whoa, that doesn't sound very good. Why am I not getting the fully rated 96.48 watt hours that I paid for on the pack? Well, the 96.48 watt hours is the actual total capacity of the battery cells forming a pack within the battery. What is necessary to consider is that following that battery pack, since we're not just plugging batteries directly into our laptop or phone, is that there is likely a buck boost converter being used in the situation for USB-C since it can operate at five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, 15 and 20 volts, I believe. Go back to the earlier point of the video uh, to get all of that. But basically it can operate at a range of voltages that is below and above what will likely be the pack voltage. So just to give an example, this is the Texas Instruments LM3478 boost converter. It is not likely not the IC being used in this particular battery pack, but just used as an example. What's important to note here is, is you look at the efficiency graph on the right side. If you look at the operating voltage, the VN on the X axis, we're probably somewhere between just under 10 volts, maybe somewhere between eight or nine volts, upwards to about 14 to 15 volts, depending on the pack configuration and the state of charge. Once we do a teardown in the final video, we'll get an uh, absolute uh, confirmation as to how the pack is constructed. But right now, roughly assuming we're somewhere between that seven, eight volt range to 15 volt VN, as you look at the various loading, one amp, two amp, and three amps, you can see that the efficiency, we'll say optimistically 83% to maybe 87%. 79.5% out of this on our first run is pretty good. And it's even better when you consider a few additional side notes. First of all, we need to consider the USB meter accuracy. It's a great tool, but it hasn't been calibrated and I really don't know how accurate it is across its range of operation. Also, the battery pack protective circuitry might have cut in when the battery was loaded quite heavily and cut the battery out earlier than it might have if it were running in a more lightly loaded scenario. Finally, the battery state of charge monitoring may not have fully topped off the battery in this particular case, leaving it at a state of charge of perhaps 92 or 95% instead of the full 100. This is usually done in more intelligent batteries to extend the life of the battery. All of these need to be taken into account when we're looking at the overall efficiency of the battery. If you watch the next video, we'll be talking about the various power profiling of a pack in general and how buck boost converter technologies function. But overall, the Anchor 30 watt power delivery 
battery pack is quite great. The positives are it has a large capacity, high efficiency from the initial testing. It can provide almost 30 watts to a USB-C powered device. During testing, even toward the end of the discharge run, it stayed very cool during operation and did not rise above 10 degrees C from room ambient. And like I mentioned, it comes with a USB-C charger that can be used to charge the pack, your phone, or lower power laptops. And it's reasonably priced compared to other similar packs. A few things to consider that were less than positive is that the pack is on a heavier side since it's an all metal case and contains a bit more electronics in it than a battery pack that isn't providing power delivery. It did turn off sometimes if it is too lightly loaded in the situation where you're charging, say, Bluetooth headphones. On this pack, pass-through charging is not possible. When you're charging with power delivery, the USB-A ports do not allow you to power it. And the last thing, which I know only from the pack that I've had for about a year now, is that it does not charge efficiently via solar. Now, this newer pack that I have, although it seems like it is the same hardware and uh, construction, maybe there were some changes to it uh, and we could test this out if I were to get a sunny day here to try it. But that does not seem likely as we head into winter. Overall, it's a great pack for the price and I would recommend it. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please thumbs up and provide any comments or if you have any questions, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.